What's up guys, do you want to get better at Smash? Of course you mean you watch my videos, so Metafy is probably the best place for you to get sessions right now and get a lot better. There are a ton of different amazing coaches and you'll even find me on there. It's also not just for Smash, it can also be for different games like Brawlhalla or Pokemon or even chess. Anyways, if you want to book a session and become legitimately better, then there's no better time than now since offline is coming back. And you can very easily get a session by either joining my Discord or going to the Metafy webpage and you'll be able to see my schedule there and you can pick whatever time fits you. Don't forget to use the promo code for a 15% discount as well as you can refer a friend to take a session as well. And if they do, then both of you will get a $10 discount. Ivysaur plays a pressure and anti-air heavy game. He's the middleweight and the Pokemon that hopefully can close the deal. He'll mostly try to pressure with Razor Leaves and his vines to outspace you, to pressure the ground and try forcing as many jumps and shields as possible. Preferably you'll be able to use your Razor Leaves effectively to attempt to control the rhythm of the game as much as possible, to better know when to expect shields and jumps. Not only do you want to play a reactionary anti-air game against those jumps, but you'll also want to understand how you can cover jumps as well as read and hard punish jumps. Obviously, you'll also want to mix up by grabbing shields or catching landings with grabs as well as it's incredibly rewarding, so the threat of it can condition jumps as well. Forward air and back air are basically small disjointed swords that are safe if landed and spaced. This will be your only safe pressure against ground as nothing else that Ivysaur has is safe. So all tilts, smashes, and dash attacks are punishable. Down tilt could potentially be used as a mix-up after forward air to punish shield releases or after razor leaf to intercept the dashes in, as it comes out incredibly fast, but it'll still be very punishable against shield. This means that you'll mostly do landed aerial pressure into dash away, immediately anti-air, as well as short hop away before landing and react with either another aerial or razor leaf if the aerial would be out of range as well as you could just simply land into an anti-air or grab mix-up as well. You could mix up with neutral air rarely since it'll come out fast, beats opponents not holding shield for a long time, beats spot dodge, and jumps, but it will never be safe against shield. Even though you can fast fall to mix it up, it'll still be punishable. And so, for neutral, it'll mostly just be used as an anti-air or out of shield option. It will be really good for platform pressure though, while full hopping and double jumping. Platforms is also where Ivysaur's pressure starts becoming very potent and scary because of his up air and down air mix ups. Not only will the down air combo, but when it doesn't, it'll at least set up into a tech chase for grabs and razor leaves. A very common opening against Ivysaur will be jumping over a preemptively pressed Razor Leaf from burst range, and so not only should all your Razor Leafs be reactionary while short hopping and drifting well, but you should also be reacting with whether you want to tilt input the Razor Leaf or smash input the Razor Leaf. The smashed one goes faster and will be best for zoning and keeping someone out, while the tilted one is more so if you decide to approach after the Razor Leaf. Since it's moving slower, you can combine it with aerial approaches, dash grabs, or anti-airs. Both versions will also be useful for catching landings, as the slow one can cover a closer spot for longer while the smashed one goes further. There is a sweet spot on the first half of the Razor Leaf and a sour spot at the end of its life, which has less knockback and less hit stun, but will still allow you to combo as long as you tilted it. Using a bunch of B reverses can be helpful too, so instead of jumping in with forward air, you instead could side B behind you and immediately flick towards the opponent, or you short hop back a side B behind you and flick the stick towards the opponent for mix-ups. In the cases where you short hop and expect them to jump in for an approach, you could also either react with forward air, up air, or double jump neutral air. So jumps can either be reacted to, read, or covered. Covering a jump basically means preemptively using a full hop aerial into another aerial mix-up. So not just double jump mix-ups, but full hop neutral air into any other aerial before landing. Hitting a full hop neutral air will also allow you to combo. Buffering short hop aerials will usually not allow you to true combo, and instead you'll have to try reading them for a follow up. The only way a short hop neutral air will combo is when you drift it off stage or off a platform. Landing aerials, however, will almost always allow a true combo and will be huge for Ivysaur to get since they lead into a ton of damage and some of the most common ways for you to find a kill. Landing a back air at low percents can lead into grabs, which is great. 
but let's say you feel like dash grab will be too slow, then you'll just want to dash attack if you think the back air was sloppy. If you hit it just right though, you could follow up with multiple, as long as you also very slightly delay the second back air. Either way, the combo game is very potent and will be even better with platforms. Hitting landing aerials will even set up tech chases at higher percents onto platforms. The dash attack won't have any combos, but will pop opponents up for up airs to be a threat. If they air dodge, you'll almost always be able to punish, which will force out jumps most of the time for you to try catching landings with more up airs, dash grabs, razor leaf, up tilt, and even vine whip. You probably won't have time to punish fast fall air dodge, but if you do, you'll probably do it with dash attack as it comes out on frame 4 and will also kill at really high percents. So, dash attack can also be decent at intercepting dashes in, as well as dashes away if you want to overshoot your approach. Finding grabs will be incredibly potent, as well as it puts the opponent in a horrible spot. Grab at 0% and you'll mainly want to try getting full hop neutral air. If you can't, on some characters, then you'll just want to up throw up air instead, which can be extended with platforms. Up throw up air will stop comboing after around 50-60%. You could also try to extend things by doing a down throw, short hop neutral air. Delay your fast fall and it can set up for a tech chase which you can read. Grab them at the corner and you'll at least now be able to short hop neutral air off stage for even more combos. SDI in against neutral air could mess with the combo as you could pop out behind Ivy. Once they are around 5-10%, to down throw full hop neutral air should start working. Aerials will connect till around 60-70% if they DI away, and will still combo into Vine Whip till around 90-95%, in which case, aiming with the Vine Whip will be the hard part. Reacting to their DI after an aerial or throw is super important with Vine Whip, especially since there are a ton of angles as well as a sweet spot on the tip. If you're getting hit by Vine Whip far out and low to the stage, you'll need to DI in to survive. If you're a bit less off stage and instead higher up, then you'll want to try DI down in a way to survive the hit. If they DI in, the down throw up air might kill confirm till around 100%. So basically around roughly 80 to 100%, there will be somewhat of a 50-50 on punishing DI in and DI out which kills if you grab them close to the corner. Past 100%, you'll be using forward throw or back throw instead to launch them off stage, and preferably go off stage immediately with Razor Leaf to drain the opponent off their disadvantage resources, and then find neutral airs, down airs against low recoveries, and vine whips against high recoveries. If the recovery is too hard to challenge, you should basically just try to two frame with down air instead. Otherwise, you'll kill with back throw at high percents, or kill with down throw at extremely high percents. Rarely will you be using forward tilt to react with as a punish and set up for tech chases at starting percents, and up tilt to react to jumps straight above you quickly, which might combo into up air. You could also full hop to scare an air dodge and then punish with double jump up air. Down tilt will be really good for quick punishes, however, and will set up for tech chases at around 50%. The craziest part about Ivysaur's advantage state is that even when there isn't a true combo, he'll be amazing at frame trapping air dodges, and even forcing double jumps to landing punishes. Up smash is used to punish tech rolls on platforms as it's huge and strong, down smash might be good for punishing tech rolls in certain situations, and of course you could use them both for hard reading in general. Using dash down smash could be a fast punish against landing aerials from a distance and put them in a bad spot. Forward smash can be used to call out opponents on dashing in, or air dodging as well as landing in a bad spot against you. It isn't safe against shield but might cross up at close range which can be confusing. And then there's Jab too, but you'll almost never want to use it. 
Ivysaur can Lich Trap up close, shielding and pressure Lich Dolls with Down Smash, Down Air, Forward Air, Back Air, and even Dash Attack, which is also good for 2 framing. Standing here and shielding also allows you to neutral air and punish almost all ledge options, while roll can be reacted to with back air. Or turn around so you can react with neutral air and now grab against rolls. You could in theory do bullet seed out of shield to react to jumps, but they might pop out with or without SDI, so it'll be inconsistent, even as an out of shield option, so most of the time you'll be using up air to react to jumps instead. You could also stand at roll distance to try pressuring most ledge options at different timings with the razor leaf, and attempt to react to jumps with vine whip or aerials. Stand a little closer at the right position and you can space forward smash to cover almost every ledge option with good timing. Even the jump as well as the ledge stall if you angle it down. Double jumps in can be punished in multiple ways but will mostly depend on the aerial. When you are offstage recovering you'll need to make sure that Ivysaur can see the ledge. Straight below works but once you've passed the ledge you can no longer recover with vine whip. This is instead used to try hitting opponents. So a ledge option you could use is to flick down and up B really quickly to punish, or make it a bit slower before grabbing the ledge with just the whip. Mix in a double jump aerial before grabbing, or decide to maybe hang on for a bit as a mix up as well. Re-grabbing the ledge will get you heart punished though so you still need to be careful. Your other ledge options could be double jump in with neutral air. The end lag is so low so if you don't land you'll be able to mix in an air dodge, back air or any of your specials. Ledge jump neutral air can work as a mix up or anti air, but will be more punishable against shields. Of course you could also mix up with any of your other aerials as well. You could also flick down just after pressing up B. This allows you to cancel the tether recovery and will give you a tiny stall and a slight bit of height. Learning how to use this can be incredible for mix-ups. The slight jump from the up B will also allow you to double jump first, use a razor leaf at the right height, up B, flick down and mix in an aerial or another razor leaf. So, Ivysaur having so many ways to deal damage and kill can be very scary, and if for some reason he can't pull it off, then Charizard will be next. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you liked it, and if you want to support my work, then please help me out on Patreon. And to all my Patreons, thank you so much for all the support. And feel free to come by my Twitch as I stream almost daily from 4pm EST.